Hi, class. Um, this is uh, a very special guest I have for you guys for our segment on comics. Uh, I brought in Mike Rossi. He is currently about to graduate from his master's degree in comics at California College of the Arts. He is finishing his graphic novel as we speak. It is a graphic novel, right, Mike? Uh, yeah, we'll call it a graphic novel, sure. Yeah, so we're going to learn all about that fun terminology. And uh, without further ado, Michael Rossi is going to give us a quick intro, and then I'm going to do some rapid-fire Q&A for you guys. So, Michael, I turn it over to you. Awesome. So I promised Yvette that I would start um, by sharing this image. Um, this is one of my illustrations. So I actually, um, I hold a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Art in Illustration. Um, and um, kind of played around with a variety of different practices. So digital illustration, as well as um, traditional media, like um, oil paint and pen and ink and those kinds of things. But I've always been really interested in comics, um, always really enjoyed them. Grew up with superhero comics, DC, Marvel, those kinds of things. Um, and then after undergrad, um, was really kind of exposed to a whole world of, of comics and graphic novels through a job at the public library. Um, so really kind of learning about the different, um, different ways stories can be told in that kind of medium and that kind of form. So after psyching myself up and telling myself it was okay to go back to school and pursue another artistic degree, I decided to pursue um, a degree in, um, in comics. So as Yvette mentioned, I'm currently in the MFA Master of Fine Art Comics program at California College of the Arts. Um, and I'll be actually finishing up the program in, um, in just a couple weeks. So I'm gonna show you a couple of pages. Um, so this was just a short four page comic um, that I completed um, last year. Um, these pages are actually changed slightly just a little bit and are going to be included in my, in my thesis project. It was about a 140 page comic memoir graphic novel however you want to put it. Um, so this, um, these pages kind of talk a little bit about when my mom's hair fell out during her, um, her cancer treatment. Um, but that style changed actually a little bit. And I'll show you pages that are kind of in the final style that I settled on. Um, oops, it's not what I wanted to do. Um, so as part of the program, we actually, all the, the students um, submit pages, a chapter or so, to um, the uh, anthology. So every year, the MFA uh, students um, essentially put out an anthology of their works. So these are some of the pages from that. Um, so my, um, as I mentioned, my, my memoir is more... <laughs> that motorcycle outside? Um, Sounds like my house. <laughs> I'm right on the street here. Sorry about that. Um, it's a, a graphic memoir that kind of talks a little or goes goes over um, my journey, kind of finding myself and how my mom's illness and death was kind of integral in um, in me kind of starting to figure out my life. So um, as you can imagine, her, her illness and death kind of factors in pretty greatly there. So um, again, these are some, some final pages. One of the cool things about this program was it allowed me to... Um, to challenge myself and, and play around with a different style. So um, this is not really how my illustration um, or my painting looks, um, but because I travel heavily, I work a full-time job um, and I, I get to travel around the world, which is awesome, but much more difficult to, to carry art supplies and things. Um, I've been working pretty much on an iPad um, to, to do a lot of these pages and do a lot of this work. So um, I also simplified the style because I didn't have really the, the time to sit there and, and create pages in a, in a way that I normally would approach an illustration. So that's been kind of a fun and interesting challenge um, throughout part of the the program as well. So um, yeah, so this book, I have about 20 or 30 pages left. Um, my next next part of the process actually is to start querying agents. Um, 
and then start pitching it to publishers. So hopefully sometime soon, I will um, be able to get a book deal and, you know, get this thing published, which would be kind of exciting. So nice. That was kind of my, my first question for you was, um, what are your goals and how do you plan to achieve them? Because I think a lot of students are really fascinated with comics and maybe make their own, but they don't really know where to start as far as, you know, making the leap between I make this for myself and I make it in my house to I make it for the world and I have a publisher. So sure. can you walk us through what the steps like for your achievement would look like in your Definitely. most ideal world. So um, comics is not the kind of field you go into if you want to be like a millionaire. Um, you know, kind of like a lot of creative industries, um, you know, you're not really going to make a whole, a whole shit ton of money in comics. Um, but that's, that's okay. That's not actually what I'm, I'm doing this for. Um, I love stories. I'm fascinated by stories. Um, I love kind of sharing stories with people. So my, my goal, um, my short term immediate goal is to finish this, uh, this memoir and, and find a publisher, um, and actually have a, like a physical, a physical product, a physical book that you can like see on a bookshelf in a library or in a bookstore. Um, the cool thing about comics though is as maybe some of you are aware, some of you may actually be doing already, um, as I've alluded to, like literally anybody can make a comic. Um, and to go to like a zine fest or something like that, you literally just need to draw a few pages, um, play around with a couple of things and you could photocopy things, um, staple them, get a table at a, a zine fest and, and sell your stuff. So really depending upon what it is you're looking for, um, there's, there's a whole lot of, of possibility out there, even just within my cohort. Um, some people really want to get into teaching and kind of share things that way um, with people. Others want, you know, to, to write the next great American comic book. Um, but what's really cool about, yeah, what's really cool about comics is that there's not, you know, just one kind of specific genre or whatnot. There's there's a comic for everybody, um, for all different tastes and, and types, things done in all different styles. Um, you know, obviously superhero comics, memoir comics, erotic comics, uh, horror comics, romance comics, like you name it, there's there's stuff out there for people. Um, so again, I guess with my goal is to, to get published and then um, to try to navigate my way into, um, into a place where I can kind of balance uh, an art practice, my comics practice with some of the other things going on in mm -hmm. life. And if you were to, so if I were to break it down into steps on like a WikiHow page, and it was like, okay, so step one, you've made your comics. Step two, you go to a zine fest by pitching it to, you know, whoever's hosting a booth. Um, or do you host your own booth? And then from there, you're like, okay, I've done two years of zine fests. Um, I have a decent amount of product now. Um, when you're saying you're starting to query the uh, agents, how does that look? Do you Google search agents or do you like, do you have friends or your professors or people you talk to about that? Sure, yeah, so there's, there's not one magic kind of formula to all of this as far as um zine fest and things like that like unless you're trying to get a table at san diego comic-con um you know things are, are generally a little bit more laid back sometimes some of these uh, smaller zine fests and things will actually prioritize new artists new cartoonists um sometimes they'll let you share a table sometimes tables are like 50 bucks sometimes they're 500 dollars. it just it really kind of depends um a lot of times especially if you're starting out it's a good idea to if you're able to share space with somebody or the way the college does it, you know, we'll actually table at, um, at some kind of, you know, zine fest or, or uh, comic con or whatnot. And then the students are able to kind of take turns manning the table, um, showing their work, selling their work, talking to people, things of that nature. Um, so we're not really putting out all that money up front, but it, it really depends. And there's, there's zine fests and, and things like that pretty much all over the country. Um, but yeah, it's it's always a good idea to have some work to show people. Usually, um, the the hosts will ask to see some of the work. Um, you know, when you kind of apply for that table or whatnot, um, and you ideally would start kind of building a following that way um, with having um, you know zines or comics to sell. Um, you know, some people will do like buttons and stickers and pins and posters and postcards and all that kind of stuff. It's really you know kind of 
kind of wide open the things that you can sell um, in that regard, unless the zine fest has specific kind of rules. Um, <clears throat> so ideally, you're kind of building your network that way or getting your name out there. Um, but whether or not you're super popular or just starting out, you can always try to find a, an agent. Um, so querying agents um, is, is an interesting process. So if you have connections, you know somebody who's an agent, you know somebody who knows an agent, you're already ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but it is pretty much researching. So, you know- It's like a very at, intimidating process. Oh, a little bit. It depends what kind of person you are. I'm not really great at selling myself. So for me, it's, it's not a super exciting, energizing kind of process. Um, agents are not really, um, anybody can call themselves an agent. Right. So there's not like a society of agents or, or anything like that. Um, and then all literary agents are different. So some might only work with children's books. Some might only work with, you know, adult nonfiction. Some might only do poetry. Um, a specific comic agent is not. They're, they're not necessarily like hundreds of thousands of them out there um, that are easy to work with. So it's a lot of trying to um, kind of visit publisher websites, um, you know, see what kinds of of. Um, authors, artists, cartoonists, creators, some agents have worked with, um, see what kinds of books publishers are putting out to see where your story, where your book, where your pitch might fit, um, and, and kind of take it from there. Um, one of my friends actually got an agent through Twitter. Um, there was some kind of, I'm not super good with Twitter, so I don't really know the terminology with this, but um, some kind of day or, or opportunity where agents, you know, you put a certain kind of hashtag in your tweet, um, and agents kind of follow along with those tweets. And if they're interested in your, your book, your idea. So like my, my tweet might have been something like, you know, um, a jazzier version of a memoir where someone tries to find themselves after their mother dies of cancer, something like that. Um, so if an agent was kind of looking at those, um, you know, those tweets with those hashtags and was interested, they might comment or like it. And that would kind of be an invitation for me to kind of reach out and query that agent where I essentially would introduce myself, let them know what kind of work I do, share my, you know, share my work, share my website and see if they're interested. Um, and generally you query a handful of agents at a time um, and hopefully find somebody that wants to work with you. That's nice. Cause that feels like a very proactive and simple process that you could like do every day when you wake up, if it's just like your thought and then a hashtag and see, you know, it's kind of like fishing, right. like you're just putting out your line. So it's the, it's yeah. like the bare minimum that you can do when like everything you're doing can be so exhausting that it's nice to have that one small thing, that little bite you can take. Very yeah, cool. Definitely. And it's social media, much to my disappointment, is very important when it comes to things like this. Um, you know, so I have my uh, my Instagram and my baby Twitter, as somebody somebody dubbed it, with my one tweet. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, social 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 media is kind of the, the scourge of society. But in some instances, it's it's pretty important. So um, you know, if you're in a position where you're trying to get your work out there and whatnot, a publisher is always more comfortable um, signing somebody that they know has a following. Um, they obviously have to kind of help and contribute with. Um, getting your ideas out there and getting your book out there and whatnot. But if they already know you have 500 followers, 1,000 followers, 10,000 followers, they're much more comfortable signing you because they know that there's already a built-in audience for your stuff. Um, mm. 